scanning. Game initialized. Tetron loaded. Let's play. Hello and welcome to a new series of Rust Guide. My name is Tetron um, and I've spent quite a few hours on this. I think I'm on about 150, 160 hours on Rust now. Um, so I thought it was about time to show you um, the crack of being a beginner really and the basics of uh, what to do, what to look out for. This will be spread over a couple of uh, guides. So in the first one, I generally show you how to get yourself started, what to do. This is based off of a vanilla server. Um, so it's literally those first, uh, you know, few uh, hours uh, maybe into into your experience in Rust, just to give you the basic guides. And um, this is as up to date as the 20th of August 2016. So this is the current XP system, level system. Um, and uh, all the blueprints have just dropped as well previous Thursday. So I shall take you through the first one. So I've just jumped onto a vanilla server and as you can see you start off um, with being asleep at a random place. So let's wake ourselves up. All right. So on this one as you can see bottom left hand corner I'm level one with no experience and I start off with a rock in my first bar and a torch in my second slot. Now the torch really isn't that that useful uh, when you start off with but what you really want to concentrate on is your rock. First thing to do is to uh, have a look at your surroundings and see what's about. So I've spawned on a beach um, with quite a little bit of stuff around me which makes it a little bit more interesting which is cool. This is on the Happis map. Um, I haven't played on the Happis map I'm generally gone procedurally generated so apparently this is quite popular and I shouldn't generally see anybody on here um, bar wildlife just to give you a, a show of what to do. Um, so your first inkling, uh, or the first thing that you need to start doing is concentrating on your levels um, and also you need to keep an eye on your health and your water. So your health and your water is at the bottom right hand corner, Yeah. Um, sorry your food and your water. Your food is the bottom one where it's currently at 99, your water is at 87 and my health is at 61, bottom right hand corner of the screen. Um, just to give you a quick overview. So when you go into your character screen, you have your standard model there that is randomly generated for yourself. Uh, down here are when you start clothing yourself, are the resistance levels that you have against different things such as hot, cold, nuclear, um, so on and so forth, different weapons, guns and so on. Along here is where you have your uh, wearable items. Here is your inventory and here are your quick access slots. Uh, when you start getting a little bit more levels you go into the crafting. So initially you start out with a couple of things, so 6 in building, 19 in items and so on and so forth. Um, but the things that we want to concentrate on really, first off is your sleeping bag. Now when you place one of these on this will let you spawn back in your sleeping bag if you do die. Now it's really handy when we start setting up a, a quick base uh, of operations really so that you can quickly spawn back and don't get lost. Um, so the aim first off is to level up to level 3 uh, to get the hatchet and the pickaxe which will help us resource gather and then get to level 4 um, and just level up as quick as possible. What um, I have liked is every time you hit, as you can see in the centre of the screen, every time you hit one of those in the background which is a barrel you get experience which is awesome. Um, and those are boxes and crates that you see along the way. Now you also want to pick up random things such as in the background there you can see some corn, another bit of corn there. Anything you see lying on the floor, pick it up. It gives you experience. So what we'll do is we'll quickly run over to here and we'll see what's going on with this. So as you can see there's food in the background, there's a few pumpkins over there that we'll want. But we'll, we'll break this and we'll see what it gives us. So that's a nice bit of burlap wrap um, there. So if you do see barrels and stuff uh, along the way, pick it up. Um, we definitely want some food. You've got to be careful in water as well. If you go a bit too deep, just press and hold the um, jump button. It'll keep you on the top. So we've picked a pumpkin, which you want to eat straight away, and a uh, corn on the cob. Okay, so it'll give you seeds that you can plant, so we're not really that interested in those yet. Um, but we do want to make sure that we don't die by eating. So if we just pick all these up, while we're here. Um, a good thing to do as well is while you're run, running about um, keep an eye out for a good base of operations. So we've hit level 2 which is really good we want to keep on doing that and that's just by collecting things. And what we'll do, we'll go 
got bits of food, so we'll just eat these up. Oh, drop that one. Okay, so that's uh, given us quite a lot of health and quite a lot of water now, so we're good now. So what you want to do is you want to look for stone and sulfur are this coloured rock. Okay, you don't want to be going on bashing on a standard rock like this because this will give you nothing as you see it and will just damage your, your item. But you want to be bashing on coloured rocks like this which will give you stone and sulphur and the other type of coloured rock are these ones which are the greyish coloured ones which will give you stone and metal. So we want to bash on it like that with your rock and as you can see on the right hand corner of the screen we're starting to collect metal ore, high quality metal ore, metal ore stone um, and we want to keep on doing this really until the rock breaks. What we're aiming for first is to have enough materials for a stone pickaxe and a stone hatchet. That will help uh, gather more materials over this measly rock that we've got here. Um, so we're aiming for about 250 wood and 125 stone for the stone pickaxe and 200 uh, wood and 100 stone for the stone hatchet. And that gets unlocked at level 3. Now, bottom left hand corner of the screen right at the bottom you have an XP now that XP is slowly going up as you're doing an activity use those XP's to unlock um, like blueprints or, or recipes to to make material uh, items such as your stone hatchet and your pickaxe okay so we want to be accruing that as well which we will automatically do as we're actually gathering so we've nearly finished this rock. Um, a tip is that if you're if you're up here, sometimes a bit bit of a pain to try and hit that rock. Just duck and hit it. Um, it's dead easy. And plus, if you're on a populated server, um, high, your obvious mining will make noise for everybody to hear. As you can see, it's quite distinctive. By ducking round and keeping rotating round a rock, not only uh, gives you uh, you know movement for people that are targeting you but it keeps your visibility up when you're looking around um, to make sure that you're not being crept up on because again this is a survival game um, and people will come and kill you to take your um, you know your hard worked resources so you want to be very careful on what you're actually doing and, and who you're looking out for so luckily just for the purposes of these guides I'm on a dead server um, so we shouldn't really have anybody on there unless my being on here is going to attract uh, someone. So we'll keep on breaking on this stone. So after this one it should give us enough to then move on to a tree. So any of the trees are breakable, but obviously the bigger the tree the more resources you get from it. Uh, so I nearly finished this. So as you can see from this one, I've been gathering sulphur and stone. Sulphur is not uh, too important to you until later on in the game. Um, so if you did need the space in your inventory, feel free to bin that um, because you can easily grab it back. So we're just going to start bashing on a tree. As you can see, every hit we're getting 10 wood uh, coming in. So hopefully one of these trees should give us a level 3 and allow us to at least unlock the stone pickaxe or the stone hatchet. Now, if you notice also, the sun's starting to set as well. So, in rust, when it gets dark, it gets dark. So, a lot of people change their gamma uh, so they can see a lot more. Um, or you can use lighting implements such as torches and so on and so forth. No, what you have to do is be very careful in the dark that there is wildlife running around. Um, and all of the wildlife bar two are friendly. Now the unfriendly ones are bears and wolves. Now wolves, yeah, they'll nip at you and you can beat them with your rock. Uh, bears, you can't. Um, so it's best to be very, stay clear away from wolf, uh, bears completely. Now, as you saw then, when I hit level three, um, it popped up on the screen what items I've unlocked to actually uh, create or purchase. So we can go through and find them. So we want to go into tools and then we've got the choice of a stone pickaxe and a stone hatchet. So luckily we've got four experience, so what we can do is actually unlock both. So we want to unlock the stone uh, hatchet and the stone pickaxe, like so. In the crafting menu, 
we can then click on the items and it will give us the cost so like I said the hatchet is 200 wood 100 stone so we want to craft that and that will add that to our crafting queue and as you can see as I've hovered over it there um, you can cancel that out anytime you want um, if you wanted to get others queued up and we also want a uh, hatchet a uh, 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 pickaxe sorry right so that's those two um, off and running now and again the bottom right hand corner you can see stone hatchet and how long it's going to take to actually produce so that is your quick guide to what's being crafted next is get up to uh, level four so what we'll do what we can also do to um, once we've hit level four we then need to start looking at um, sort of building a base of operations so always keep your eye out for a little bit of food pick anything up that's on the floor because it gives you experience like so uh, they're not collectibles and you also want to look for hemp um, hemp is a really good source of uh, cloth which is what you need to start picking up for uh, sleeping bags so we'll pick up a bit of wood that's nothing and here we hit some hemp as well so luckily what you get with hemp is you get some cloth and some seeds so there's your hemp seeds and there's your cloth so you can start planting outside a base once you eventually make one so keep picking up your items and i think we've got the tools done so we can pull the cloth out and equip the pickaxe and the um, hatchet and what we can do is we quickly see if we find a node here and start with your pickaxe you can see we get a lot greater yield from harvesting these resources so we're hitting uh, 33 stone each time and I think it's 33 metal as well and, and a handful of um, high quality metal oh and a bit of sulfur there which is nice to see there you go and it obviously clears the resource a lot quicker So it's starting to get dark. We want to see if we can keep an eye out for some more hemp, which I did see up in there. And luckily we don't have to worry too much about our health at the minute because we've eaten quite heartily. So keep on picking up that hemp and those stones, look. And all the while, it's good to have a look around, keep your eye out on the landmarks as well. Um, good first time bases are bases at the end of rivers that's got a little um, underpass on a on the rock, rocky outcrop, or even cave bases. Cave bases make a brilliant first base of operation. Um, they're easy to defend, uh, to wall off, um, and <laughs> they're just pretty pretty simple. Pick up mushrooms too. Um, good little food source uh, if you do need it so as you can see it's starting to get pretty dark now actually I, I've been told uh, I hadn't played Rust from the start but Rust originally started as a zombie game so uh, would have been uh, a lot different back then uh, to what it is now uh, if there were zombies in here definitely a lot tougher you do have a lot to contend with as a solo player um, when you're playing on a populated uh, world um, and if you're wanting if you're just starting out um, I really would advise jumping on a, a very low population map um, just to get your bearings uh, just to see how the game feels uh, what you need to do by starting off once you get a little bit more experienced on you just your first couple of steps like building a base um, and leveling up and everything like that you know then jump onto maybe a, a more comprehensive server um, that's just a an easy way to go about it the server seems to have a little bit of rubber banding which is a shame right so what are we on cloth wise so we've got a good amount of cloth we need a hundred no sorry we need 30 for a sleeping bag and um, 10 for a bone knife which is uh, what we need for that so what would be good then is start looking around for somewhere that we can really build do, 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 do. let's head out into the rocks maybe grab these hemp's on the way and there's level 4 which is what we needed so now what we are able, we are able to do is start building a little wooden box uh, for storage 
and a bone knife if we actually see some animals. So the reason why I say to build a bo make a bone knife is bones rarely used. Uh, you get a lot of bone, but it's rarely used in this game. Uh, what it's really good for are bone knives. Now bone knives are really good for skinning animals. You get a higher yield on fat cloth leather um, and meat using a bone knife. So it's always good um, to pick one of those up at level four. So what we'll do, well, it's starting to get lighter now, which is good, good. Uh, is that a cave over there? Okay. We'll follow this river and see what we get. What do we get? Again, I'm, oh, it's a bridge. I'm new to this Hapis uh, star map. I do like the randomly generated ones, so um, hopefully we'll be pretty good. It's just like finding that area um, that looks quite interesting. It's good to find a landmark and be quite close to the landmark and then you'll always get your bearings then. Um, so by a landmark, is that a cave? No. By a landmark I mean like an airstrip, um, satellites, a dome, uh, something along those lines that's quite easily recognisable and easy to see. Um, and the quickest way to see is to obviously get high up on a rock. So we've got some interesting mountain ranges on there. I've got anything about. So we can afford to run quite a bit. So we've got a road. So roads are really good um, for following because generally what you find is you get barrels and such. So like I've already shown you, if you whack a barrel, you get items from it. So we get a can of beans and a wood barrel cave. Sometimes the items uh, gash and you don't really need them yet. Um, other times you get some really good loot out of them. Uh, but they're worth, um, what was that? Research paper. Okay, so that's a new blueprint system, uh, which we'll show you later on. And boxes as well. They generally give you food and water. Um, it's rare that you find much in there, but it's worth just eating it um, just to get the box to respawn as well. And we have our first pig. So, pigs are easy to chase down uh, and kill, or easy ish. They can get away from you. Um, deer and horse, just don't bother trying it with a melee weapon. So, what we do is we go like this. We go, boosh, boosh. And if we're lucky, yes, we have. So, we managed to kill him, and we want to hit him with there and as you can see we're getting pork bone fragments animal fat leather uh, and we'll get some cloth from there so we need uh, 60 for a bone knife which we can't do yet so we might as well crack on so I don't know if you can hear that in the background um, but in this game you have airdrops randomly or if called in by another player um, with a flare you uh, can get an aeroplane to come in and drop you some um, items or, or a box even that you go in the loot and find out what the items are. Uh, so now we're not interested in a water barrel. Um, alternatively you also have helicopters. Uh, well the eerie music started then. You also have helicopters. Can I pick up that longsword? Yes that'll help with. So like that. Okay, so that's our first melee weapon, the longsword. That'll help with breaking barrels uh, instead of using our resource gathering tools. So, um, what can be spawned is helicopters. Now, helicopters are a real big uh, problem. Um, they really spawn to keep everything going, um, as in, you get a lot of high, higher level characters, players, um, and, you know, helicopters are quite painful for them as well. Um, so it keeps them in check quite a lot. So what we're doing is we're just cracking through and uh, grabbing a few barrels. Now, we still haven't found anywhere, so I think we should start... Oh, look, there's a lighthouse. Lighthouses are really good for consistent spawns. Um, you normally have a lot of resources around, so there's quite a lot of stone. Obviously, there's a, a mega ton of wood. Um, so let's have a look at building a base camp around here and see what's around. Do we have any good outcroppings or anything like that? Oops, somebody's built a base already over there. So no, we don't really have any good outcroppings. So 
as a bit of a shame, but what we can do, if you're in a situation where you've got no caves there or you're late to a server um, and all the really good spots have been taken, um, there is a trick <coughs> where you want to start looking to uh, look at stone sections, uh, which I'll show you. What we'll do is we will start, you know, we've got a lot there, what can we get rid of? Let's get rid of that, get rid of that, eat that. So as you can see, we're starting to get uh, something a little funny. If you grab a pumpkin and pop it on, it turns it into a pumpkin head. Um, we've got a lot of pumpkins, so let's eat those and get rid of the rock. Okay, so let's do a little bit of crafting. So what we want to do is so that we can return back to our spawn point, we want to create a sleeping bag. Then we also want to unlock a wood storage crate, so it's 3 XP and luckily we have enough, so we'll unlock that and we want to craft a storage. Um, so they're the two main items that will allow us to make a base of operations essentially. Now for sleeping bags it's really good to look for longer bushes like that and then what you can do is lie your sleeping bag in those longer bushes so for example that's quite a dense uh, long bush and the sleeping bag has just been created so pop it into your bar and then you want to as you can see my, the blue outline of the sleeping bag there we want to hide it in a bush so we've just placed that with left click and as you can see, unless you're specifically looking for a sleeping bag, you can see the little bit of it there, you know, you can't see it, so which is pretty good. So what we'd name is we'll call it the bush bag. Boom. Okay, so we've got that. So what we want to do is try and find somewhere to put a storage box pretty close. And you're looking for things like these big stones or these little stones. These little stones are perfect. So what you do, pop it in your box and then you want to place the stone to the box uh, where you can't see it, and like that. And as you can see, if I go around the box, and we've got a little bit there, um, but if I go around the stone, you can't see it. Uh, so anybody, unless you know what you're looking for, you know, there's no box there. So what we can do is literally just place everything that we need to start gathering in there. Um, as you find, when you're collecting stone uh, and wood, they stack in 1,000 uh, spaces, so it can start to fill up pretty quickly. So if we put the materials that we want to keep in there, um, do, 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 like so, here we go. And now you've got your first base of operations. Uh, what that then allows you to do, let's move this down here. Um, let's put that in there. Uh, what that then allows you to do is start looking around and start resource gathering. So just try and remember where you are, um, like the big rock uh, that's quite in line with the lighthouse. And then just crack on and resource gather. So we've done the storage box. We need a little bit of bone, um, so it would be nice if you see another pig or something along those lines um, for a bone. What you also want to do is you want to keep an eye out. So there's the bone. We can unlock that if you wanted to. And you also want to keep an eye out for your bow. Um, if you're running low on weapons or things like that, pop to a, um, a point of interest like the lighthouse. Um, the boxes generally have some really good loot in them. So what we'll do is we'll just finish mining this one since we've already started. And I'll quickly show you there. Right, okay, so there's that. So we'll quickly pop over to the lighthouse. So we've got our main base to start off with uh, for gathering. Um, we know that if we die, we're going to spawn back to that main base um, where our resources are. So it's good to do little journeys out, especially on populated servers. Little journeys out, pick things up, smash uh, quite a few rocks, quite a few trees. Um, you want to get your a lot of your wood gathering done. Um, so that you can then start making an actual base. Um, you'll need quite a bit of wood initially because um, you'll be just placing your foundation to the twig and your walls at the twig and then bare minimum you need to upgrade those to wood. Um, so probably a 4x4 is quite good for a first starter base um, just to get yourself started so that you've got somewhere enclosed that you can actually go to sleep with. Um, and that's what you're pretty much looking for. Um, 
worst case scenario you've just made a, a little base of operations that hardly anybody will find and if you just log out um, you know a little bit further away from where your sleeping bag is so that nobody actually comes to it um, and then if you do get killed when you log back in again you can respawn to your sleeping bag um, and yes in this game when you log out you uh, go to sleep on the ground so you are killable by wildlife, bears, wolves uh, and other characters as well so we'll just get to the top of here because sometimes at the top of here we get a little bit of loot do, 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 do. lighthouses are good because they don't generally attract a lot of people but there you go loot box that's what you're looking for one of the loot crates um, so when you open it you normally get something good in there a bit of shotgun pellets shotgun slugs even better than a kick in the face I suppose if you had a shotgun um, but that's given us a little bit of level a little bit of XP so by going to the different places to pick up those boxes you know it does benefit you XP wise normally if you have a look round especially at a lighthouse you get some crates, uh, some tubs that spawn, but it doesn't look like it has. So check out your closest um, closest point of interest. Keep on picking things up. When you see them, just pick them up, because as you can see there, I've just leveled up again. Um, I've grabbed the furnace, uh, which is your next big build um, that really you need once you've built your home base. Uh, so what we'll do, so we'll just we'll go back over so remember to identify your uh, point of interest or the point of origin which is over there by a big rock so it was the next big rock I'm pretty sure it wasn't this one was it no, it wasn't this one. It was that big rock over there. Yeah. So see, you need to be very careful on what you identify or what you use to identify your base of operations, really. So big rock, big tree. And I'm sure it was this rock here. Yes, there you go. Boom. Right. So we've got a little bit of loot going, and we've got some wood, and we've got some stone. So what we can do, do we have enough wood to properly get going? We might do. So the first thing you want to craft when you start building your base is a bit of paper. Um, you can then turn that paper into a blueprint, but you also want a hammer as well. So now we've just built the paper, and we can build the blueprint. So there are your two starting blocks for building. And as you can see, we've run quite low on wood. So while those are building let's go and grab some wood it's quite a thick tree over there when you think about building your first actual enclosure your space um, don't build it near your sleeping bag and your storage crate um, just for safety if somebody's going to go sniffing around a base and Ooh, there's a new base that's popped up they might stumble across your boxes so you want a full back really because your your first base isn't going to be very solid um, and easily destroyable by uh, more experienced players on there so the less that you can give them in your first base the better and people are not forgiving uh, in rust well in any survival game um, if you are used to survival games you know there, there are people well it's part of the game where you go and raid people but you know there are a lot of trolls in survival games so there's much you can do to actually reduce that impact on yourself the better really so we'll wait for this tree to go as you see gaining XP the whole time which is really cool okay so we now have a building plan and a hammer a little bit of wood a little bit of stone so what we can do is we can then start look at uh, building our first little base really so a tip uh, there's our box a tip is to try and f keep it out of the natural way of raiders um, you don't want it to stand out especially not your first base until you get a little bit more experienced 
um, you know that's a bit too high up um, you, you just don't want it in plain view a nice little rocky outcrop there look well there's loads of resources around here this is pretty cool I'm liking this okay so we might be able to get away with hiding a bit around here yes we can okay so what you want to start by doing is uh, looking at placing your first foundations now your main tool uh, for building will be your building plan now as you can see we selected that on the hotkeys there and by pressing and holding the right mouse button we can build uh, bring up the building dial so from here you can build uh, your different things such as your square foundations your triangle foundations your foundation steps your floors your walls and so on and so forth so quite self-explanatory around uh, the dial and it also tells you how much item, uh, how many items it actually costs. So, for example, foundations cost 50 wood. So, what we'll do is we'll start off by building our first four foundation. Uh, so, we'll build one there, one there, one there, and one there. So, we built a little bit in the rock, but that's fine. We're only using this as our main base. And what we want to do, or our start base, even, what we want to do is throw up some walls like so. So nicely in rust these snap to the spots uh, which is very very helpful um, and we shall pop a doorway here do we need steps to get up yes we do and we'll pop some foundation stairs there so um, this first build what we'll do is we'll just place a roof on a roof on a roof and a roof okay simple start base really for you um, and then as you can see it's all in twig now these are really easy to destroy um, if you hit them right in the middle um, with an arrow you can take one to destroy it so um, you want to either look at upgrading to wood or stone so I think we can get away with a little bit of stone so in order to do that you can or what we'll do is actually start off by building a door and a lock okay that will let you secure this building up here which is what we want and select your hammer and then we'll start upgrading to stone so you can press and hold the right click and then depending on what materials you have uh, depends on what you can upgrade it to so we have enough for wood which we don't want um, but we also have enough for stone so we release right click or sorry cl left click and it will upgrade to stone so we want to do that on everything like so uh, we're not going to have enough to do it all. Nope. So we need to go out and harvest. Uh, I know we had some stone close by. And while we're doing this, as you can see on the bottom right hand corner, that we've got things uh, building and preparing for us. We want to also look at building a cupboard. Now, what a cupboard does is it gives you building rights to a surrounding area within a radius. Um, that stops anybody else from building, um, stops anybody else from destroying your things as a building person, not destroying them um, with explosives or anything like that. Um, just, you know, it stops them from building around you and destroying your building um, as a builder. So it's yours. So that's quite key when you're making your base as well. What you want to do if you're a solo player is wall that cupboard off. Um, don't leave it open in your base, wall it off. If it's only you that is going to be in there, you only need to authorize yourself on that cupboard once um, and then you won't need to do anything else. Uh, so we've got a little bit of stone now. Let's pick up a little bit more wood because we want to start making that cupboard. How much wood we got going? So we've got a thousand wood, which means we can make a tool cupboard, which is what we want. Okay, so now we've done that, we'll go back to getting this base up and running. So we need the hammer again. Right click, upgrade to stone. Right click, upgrade to stone. We need some more stone. 
gets really expensive. Um, if you do run out of stone, you can, and you need to upgrade your base, fortify your base, you can upgrade it to wood, because it goes wood, stone, uh, sheet, uh, or me sheet metal, and then armoured. Um, so you can upgrade it to wood, then to uh, stone, and so on and so forth, but you can't go backwards. Um, so if you did need to secure a base, wood is way more secure than thatch. You don't want to leave your building thatch, especially um, you know at the end of your, your play session really, because you're more than guaranteed it not to be there later on. And so we'll go grab that. And there, as you can see, running, so on and so forth, obviously gives us XP as well. And we're quite lucky with the resources that we have around us. Keeping out an eye out the whole time for bears, for wolves. Okay, there's another bit of stone down. Oh, we don't need my fuse. Got a bit of wood. Grab this tree. Stone we've got? No, not a lot at all. <coughs> Constantly keeping an eye out for people as well. Because especially if you're on a fresh server wipe, everybody's going to be doing exactly the same as you. Um, and if you can take out somebody and pinch their resources that they've already gathered as well as your own obviously those you benefit so if you get the opportunity crack on as well um, everybody else will do so but just make sure that you kill them <laughs> Resources. We are obviously increasing levels as well. What you need to be aware of is that items have durability. So if you can see on my hotkeys down on the bottom of the screen, you have a, a little green bar now. Um, was full. That literally is your item durability. So that will tell you, you know, how long it's going to take before it's broken. So the the sword I had now is broken. You can fix it or you can bin it. Um, you know, either way, it will cost resources to fix it. So. Uh, bear that in mind if you do keep things, uh, if you need the item slot or, or whichever. And there might be some stone down there, but let's just see. Okay, so we've got stone, stone, no, okay. Um, like I said, what we can do if you're really hard up, you can upgrade them to wood, right? So, and don't forget your roofs. Um, so many people forget the roofs and then their twig at the top, you can just shoot out the twig, jump in and then see what goodies there are. Um, it might actually be a bad thing that that rocks there, but oh well. Right, so we've got that a little bit sealed off. As you can see, it's emergency work on the roof and the side of the walls. Um, but since they're the facing rocks, I'm not that uh, bothered by it uh, for the moment. So you want to put your door in the hotbar and select that. And as you can see, we've got by going slightly left slightly right we can change the way that the door opens and the door closes now if we leave it that way so it opens inwards as you can see a bar is running through the center uh, diagonally through the center that means that that's the back of the door now if you put the back of the door on the outside it's easier to break the door than it is if you put the back of the door on the inside um, so they do take that into account so make sure when you're placing the door if you if you're worried about it especially on the wooden doors make sure that you put in the back inside the house so we can left click and place so as you can see it's a different style of door on the back than it is the front uh, and it's obvious the back and the front of the door uh, what we can then do is place a lock on so select the lock on your um, hotkey and click left click on the door and what you want to do is we want to 
create a key like so and red green dot goes to red dot so now we're locked and we have that key um, what I would also advise if you've got the wood which you should have is to create another key now what this does is if you die um, out and about what we can do is since we've got our little crate over here it's we've got now two keys so you need the key to open that door as your first lock so if you die and don't know where you died you lose that key if you can't get back to your body it gets respawned or whatever or if somebody pinches it um, you know <coughs> that's it you've lost that key you can't get back in so a good tip is to go back to your stash that you've got and place a key in your stash now it's highly unlikely that somebody is going to come across that stash uh, so <coughs> it should be pretty safe or yeah. well, for the short time that you are going to have a, a key um, style lock on your door you know you should be pretty safe now that just stops you from having any issues getting back in uh, to your building so it's fine right so now we have the key it will automatically let us in and out of the door which is awesome and then we want to get our first cupboard down so just literally slap the cupboard they've recently um, modified the <coughs> the placement side of things so you can actually place them quite snug in the corners now uh, which is really good for if you're, you're tight on room if you're doing just a very small um, small box but you need to make sure that you're not poking it through the walls as well because if you poke that through the walls then you're screwed if somebody else can get authorization on it so and always remember to authorize yourself on that box if you're ever in doubt that you've been raided or anything like that go up to your box press an old e and you get the clear authorization list that deauthorizes everybody that was ever authorized and as you can see bottom right hand corner down here it says building block so i can't build in here when i authorize myself i can now build in here um, and also what i said is if you're working by yourself Oh, I can't afford to place that one, which is really helpful. Um, block off your cupboard. It stops anybody else getting access to it, um, and it's a, a lot more helpful. And what I'd also advise is for you to make a um, airlock as well, so that you've got two doors to come in, so that if you ever get attacked with this door open, they've still got another door to go through. So there you go. You now have your first base all up and running. Um, so if you needed to log out for the evening, um, you know, this, you can just exit the game if you wanted to um, and just fall asleep here. Uh, you can then, if you get killed, you respawn back at your sleeping bag, which is fine. And all your stuff is still in there and uh, on your body as well. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's a safe spot to log out. Um, and gives you a good stead for getting started in the world of Rust. Um, I'd advise your next steps from here would be to make another storage box so you can start storing items in here. Um, build yourself a furnace. Um, it's a really good uh, next uh, thing that you want. So you go into your items and it's uh, unlocked for three experience. I think it was level five you unlocked the furnace. So you unlock it and then it takes 200 stone, 200 wood and 50 low grade fuel. Now you get the low grade fuel by killing animals, um, which is what we have done. So if I quickly go back to our little stash, what you do is you take the animal fat from the animals and cloth and you craft low grade fuel with. Um, now it's good to get a furnace up and running as quick as possible um, because then you can pop in your uh, iron that you've picked up I've gone straight past the box so like so you can straight away put in your your metal or and you get iron fragments from it metal fragments even um, which means you can start making bigger things like metal doors and uh, better tools and everything like that so the sooner you start that off the better and you can also crack in your your high quality metal which gives you you know a lot better uh, items as well so what we do as well here is just pop those high grade stuff in and as you can see it's starting to from our quick slot it's starting to let us do the low grade um, so go into resources low grade maximum amount nine click craft so that's pretty quick and it will go off starting to craft all the low grade fuel and it's leveled me up as well which is quite nice um, I've got no wood there and there you go we just got the coded lock as well um, which is what you need the metal fragments for now your coded lock is the next level up from 
the key lock so it just lets you put in a four digit code uh, instead of a key so no matter if you get killed or anything like that it's fine um, you can get back in it will automatically recognize that you know the four digit code and just let you in without typing that in and you can also give that to uh, friends if they come online with you want to use your base and so on and so forth so uh, that is your upgrade really so we'll keep on bashing some trees how much low grade fuel did we get I think we needed 54 yeah it was 50 right so you need to hunt animals for that or if you're lucky um, bash a barrel with some uh, crude oil I think it is and then you can find a uh, furnace roundabout uh, mainly find them in airfields and so on and so forth so we've got a bit of wood so we'll do a box now we've got a box going should we get a sleeping bag out let's get a sleeping bag out as well and we can then transfer all this in leave your key in there it's worth doing that um, just so that you've got an additional backup so it's off making that box so we'll run back up to the base Yeah. Right, so we've made the box. So what we'll do is we'll pull off that. And again, like I said with the doors, you, the two different styles of wood, so I've just upgraded that to wood. You can see there that that's flat and that's rounded. That's the inner side and that's the exterior. So the inner side is easier to blow through than the exterior. So it's always good to reverse them whichever way you want them not to be able to get in so we'd, I'll just leave that there uh, as is and if we place the box in there um, oh and a tip that people don't really see is that you can actually rotate your boxes now um, by pressing R um, so if you want to rotate them to fit them snugger into corners and so on and so forth it's the R key uh, so that's new for me and I've been playing this quite a bit uh, and then we want to put sleeping bag in like so, like that. Uh, crack a we can crack a door up, look, doorway there, and a doorway there. That which makes it a little bit more secure eventually when we plant some uh, doors on. So there you have it. There is your first base of operation. Now that allows you to bin everything that you could possibly, you know, want to keep. Um, and go out, explore. Um, good tip, rename your bag as well. Um, new base bag. There you go. And you know where where you're spawning then. So there you go. There is your first little base in Rust. Uh, gives you a good place to explore. Shows you a few tips on, on what to do, on how to get started. Um, as obviously there is quite a few newer players and with the changes that we've had in 2016 as well to the whole system um, it's just a brief look on how to crack on um, to jump in there uh, Rust is literally you know a world open to you you can do a hell of a lot um, from recreating your own house in Rust to building a massive clan and doing uber zergs um, they also have King of the Hill uh, not King of the Hill um, well, they have a map called Embatment where you, you put off teams against each other, big PvP battles, um, and battle royales, not King of the Hill, that's it. Um, so, lots of different things like that. There are modded servers with um, additional XP gains, um, you know, everything unlocked, additional resource gains, and everything like this. What I've shown you here is a vanilla server, so it's, it's as Rust was intended and not modified. So, hope you like the first guide. Uh, hopefully, I'll do some more, uh, maybe a little bit more experienced guides to show you the different things to craft in. You can um, craft weapons in this game from melee to ranged, um, to mods for those weapons, to different kinds of ammunition, to um, all kinds of different things. So, I'll do another advanced guide um, to touch on uh, those things that are a little bit more higher advanced uh, in your basic skill so just get out there start resource gathering and um, start building uh, have a look at a couple of uh, building videos as well and um, there's some awesome base guides like Casey Mo um, very cool uh, watching his guides so I definitely recommend them um, and just the way that he builds bases just gives you a really good idea on how to fortify 
uh, on populated servers your your own stuff um, and what to use to deter people um, I've deterred people from my base for quite some time with three turrets out there with no ammunition because I wasn't high enough level to do that but the turrets in themselves were quite a deterrent which was pretty cool so um, I hope you liked the beginners video uh, please like subscribe uh, didn't take much to subscribe and it would be really uh, grateful for that um, and leave any comments below if you have any tips that you'd like to share or anything else that you would like me to go over um, I'd be happy to do so cool well I hope to see you again soon take it easy